Hello, we have with us uh, Dr. Scott Appleby, um, Marilyn Keo Dean, Keo of the School of Global Affairs of the University of Notre Dame. We just finished uh, the annual meeting of the ND Gain Index, and I think that Notre Dame has one more time shown why it is so well recognized, not only in the United States, but around the world. You have been able to put together a fantastic initiative that combines uh, the double bottom line that we should be looking at in society, both in terms of uh, helping others in need, do it in a way that is uh, constructive, productive, and smart. And with that in mind, uh, and being very fond of the University of Notre Dame, I would like uh, to learn more. I would like our audience to learn more about uh, the Keo School of Global Affairs, which of course uh, 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 is not only leading in many fronts, but as I understand, uh, has started to work a little bit on resilience and adaptation. And I would like to learn more about that. Good, thank you for this opportunity. The Keo School actually is just starting. Uh, we, uh, we announced the school a couple months ago and we will open our doors officially in 2017. But I'm here today because ND Gain is very much part of the configuration of the Keo School and will be a strong partner within the school. The school's theme is integral human development. So this is human development that takes into account the whole person. That, uh, so the bottom line there is triple or quadruple bottom line. It's an economic bottom line. It's, it's also uh, a approach to the human person that understands the human person to be uh, a spiritual, religious, cultural, psychological, economic being. And so what does it mean to focus on the development of that person? Well, it means to see the person as embedded in society and family and to take a, a whole of campus approach at Notre Dame. So we want to integrate as many disciplines as possible into studying the conditions for human development. And uh, what we've talked about all day today, very rich conversations about uh, adaptation to climate change, really draws us into a conversation about environment, about um, global health, about conflicts that might come from climate change, uh, about economic development. So these are all interrelated questions and problems, and ND Gain gives us um, a base of evidence and analysis that allows us to understand the bedrock issues around climate change. So it's very much part of that empirical base, that information base that, that we need in the Keough School to also bring in scientists and engineers and people who understand the cultures that we're working in to help adapt to climate change. And it also, the final thing I'll say about this is, the Keough School will be very much involved in one of our themes today, which is partnerships with the private sector, with government, with civil society, because we're recognizing that to address the challenges to development of the whole person in society, you really need to form partnerships between the academy, business, government, civil society. So this conversation today was terrific in all of those respects because it touched upon the need for practical uh, uh, solutions, knowledge-based, research-based, data-driven solutions, that address the whole person and the societies in which these challenges are most rooted. I, uh, when I see at Notre Dame and the track record it has in many fronts, it is refreshing to see that with uh, the Keo Institute, you will be able to capitalize on the experience yeah. that through the years, yes. through the different yeah. uh, areas of academia from the university you have built on, and incorporate some of the major global trends that are really shaping the life of not only today's generation, but of course the future generation. So uh, if you care to share with us, what are some of those uh, global trends that uh, you see that Kia will be uh, uh, focusing on? And since 
Notre Dame is uh, 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 a Catholic university, mm -hmm. it will be also interesting to understand that uh, link mm -hmm. with the religious aspect. Mm -hmm. For example, as population growth and population shifts from, from one part of the country to another or from one country to another. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those global trends mm -hmm. and how uh, do you uh, foresee linking that very important aspect of human life including population okay. shifts. Let me mention the Catholic connection that you, you referred to, Notre Dame's Catholic mission. This term I use to describe the theme of the school, integral human development, which also happens to be an emphasis of Catholic Relief Service, this mm -hmm. global NGO, uh, is drawn from Catholic social teaching. And Catholic social teaching uh, is not merely Catholic, it's, it's framed in such a way that it reaches out to people of all faiths and none. Mm -hmm but it's drawn from church teaching. And so it does refer to um, development that focuses on the entire person, doesn't reduce the person to merely the economic or material, but understands human beings as cultural, essentially cultural. And, uh, and also draws upon um, a variety, as you mentioned, around Notre Dame's campus and in other universities, we want to bring in as many disciplines, as many perspectives on these problems as possible. What are some of those problems? Well, there are, there are numerous. Uh, we, we generally think today, if you said, what are the four challenges facing the world? One of them would be, in fact, climate change, everything we've talked about today. Closely related will be global health. Another uh, enduring problem is conflict, ethnic, religious, sectarian conflict. Uh, the other problem closely related is uh, poverty and, and everything associated with radical poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, we've made progress in uh, reducing poverty, but it's still an enormous problem for that bottom billion and for the impact of growing inequality that could push people out of the middle class. And we know that these partnerships we're talking about, especially with the private sector, are partnerships that will um, really hope, hopefully lift people into the middle class and secure their role in the middle class around the world. So these are these problems of climate change, global health, ongoing conflict, urban migration, climate change, these are all overlapping integrated problems. Climate change will have a relationship to uh, conflict and therefore at, the, at Notre Dame's Kroc Institute, we study conflict transformation, peace building, nonviolent uh, approaches to, and I would to like resolving to that I'm very interested in, in learning more about that. Yes. Uh, so built a little bit on the uh, one of those four or five major trends mm -hmm. that you mentioned, uh, on the uh, adaptation to climate change, on issues that um, really affect people's lives and livelihoods, whether it is their implication on food, agriculture, energy, or coastal protection. What do you envision uh, as part of the technical work that one, the students will be benefiting from, and two, society in general because of the research and the fact that Notre Dame has such a wonderful platform? And one of the concrete problems we talked about in an earlier panel today was the effect of climate change on agriculture mm -hmm. and the fact that there will be forced migrations from one part, we were talking particularly about countries in Central America. They will, farmers will be forced to migrate. There will be uh, reductions in crops. There'll be economic displacement. Um, how do we begin to think about that uh, with expertise in refugee work, in climate change, in peace and conflict? Notre Dame students are gonna be prepared to be fluent in the science and the technology. They may uh, specialize in the regional culture and history, but they have to know something about uh, the agricultural patterns. They have to know something about the technology. They have to know about policy. So we've got to give them a kind of baseline understanding, essentially of how the world works, so that they can move into one of these sectors and be uh, recognized as sophisticated and skilled. So maybe they will be a consultant to the private sector to ask how do corporations you know, serve the double bottom line 
by investing strategically in ways that support the stability of societies and their economic growth. That might be the specialization of one track of our students, but they also need to know about um, uh, the technical aspects, um, randomized controlled trials to figure out what's working in development economics. They need to know policy questions, and they need to know something about the, the history and the culture of the region, the people involved. So they're not going to be expert in all those things, but we're hoping to provide an education that gives them a platform, and they also can go deeper into one area. It might be technical, uh, it might be in engineering, it might be, it might be in peace and conflict resolution. But if they're going to go deep into one of those areas, they have to understand the broader picture as well. Well, I, I like very much the example because I'm from El Salvador. And yes. so when you mention uh, uh, Central America and all the issues uh, that you were highlighting, they are very timely. They are very urgent to be addressed. And it is fantastic that Notre Dame, through the Keogh, uh, uh, uh Institute, the Keogh School, is addressing re real life, real time issues uh, that are very much needed. You, you also mentioned uh, a few minutes ago the importance of partnerships, and I couldn't agree more with you. I think that the stakeholders that uh, um, are important in the global issues that you mentioned uh, need to be taken into account, need to be heard, and more importantly, as solutions are implemented, they need to be pragmatic, they need to be measurable, and uh, at the same time, hopefully, they can be replicated and escalated. So uh, tell me a little bit more about the partnership because I could, uh, based on, 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 on um, what uh, you were just describing, I could see uh, corporations, civil society organizations wanted to be a part, an yeah, active and an right. integral part of the world that you are living. They have to be. I've learned more in the last number of months about how active businesses are becoming in very constructive ways in providing what we call development related projects that are also serving economic growth and the development of markets. Uh, at the same time, partnership also means for us linking to the local communities, civil society, but, but also to the local communities themselves, represented at times by civil societies, and bringing together in, in partnership um, the private sector, corporations, local communities, civil society. I've learned that all of these segments, including government and, and the NGO world, they're working toward the same ends. They have different motivations, they have different processes, different resources, levels of resources, but they think they need one another. So private sector needs local knowledge. Corporations also want stable societies. So if we can help a bit in understanding what it means to have more effective and transparent governance, how to think about security and peace, how to understand intergroup uh, relationships and, and have some and expertise some in that, that area. We're doing a great, way. well, the Kroc Institute's a wonderful resource, as is the Kellogg Institute that works on development and democracy, Kroc on peace studies. We've got a terrific faculty uh, in the Peace Institute in particular that works on long-term sustainable peace. What does it mean? And of course, economic prosperity, the partnerships we're talking about, we're describing, are very much recognized to be necessary for people to build constructive relationships. Economic incentives are very important for people to collaborate across religious or, or ethnic or political divides especially under the pressure of a problem like climate change. So those partnerships are already kind of in the DNA of peace building. Um, now the question is how do you operationalize them? How do you bring the people together? Our peace building uh, students and faculty will benefit from knowing more about development, knowing more about operational management, knowing more about the private sector. Up until this point, these areas of study have been a little bit siloed so you, you study peace if you go into the Peace Institute, you study development over here, human rights there, techno-scientific advances over here. We want to bring those groups into conversation and again, give people a, a, a working vocabulary so they can really truly partnership, uh, enter into partnerships. That's the goal. It's ambitious, but that's what we're striving for. Well, you are so passionate about it uh, that uh, 
I would like to, to close this interview uh, uh, with a very simple question, and that is, you know, uh, what, uh, what really makes you go to work <laughs> every day with that level of passion and commitment, uh, uh, given the uh, Keo School uh, of, of, of Global Affairs mission? You know, what, what do you feel more passionate about? I'm going to I'm going to say something that's going to sound like I'm trying to flatter you but it's the truth. One of the things that I I'm very excited about is the partners and friends and colleagues of Notre Dame like yourself who have gravitated in various ways to support and work with the university and who recognize what it's attempting to do. So that's part of the larger answer. What do I get up and get excited about? I really believe in Notre Dame's mission. Um, I was a grad, I'm a graduate of Notre Dame as an undergrad. I wanted to come back to the faculty. I believe that this question of um, how can we do things, why should we do them as well, and, and what's the, what are the larger questions and values? What are the ethical considerations, the value considerations? I don't want to suggest that only Notre Dame thinks of these things. That's not true. Everyone's grappling with them. But we do have a tradition that really is deeply steeped in philosophy and ethics and theology and humanities that has been asking for a long time these questions about what is the good, what is the common good, how do we help people flourish. Now we have this great opportunity to partner with the rising units at Notre Dame like ND Gain. Uh, Mendoza College of Business's emphasis on entrepreneurship and ethics in development, Kellogg's in, uh, initiatives in development, and a variety of other things on campus. When we tie these together, that Notre Dame vision and set of commitments now can become operationalized. That sounds kind of clunky, but that's what I—that's what's exciting, that w we can be part of the conversation among so many very impressive colleges, universities and corporate partners, among others, who are already grappling with these questions, who recognize how we're all in this together, how interdependent we, have to, we are, and therefore how much we have to be in partnership. So it's very exciting for me to take a university I love and whose mission I believe in in educating young people and helping that develop into a really practical, applied, policy-oriented, uh, university that can begin to address some of these very vexing problems and do so in partnership with some of the best minds in the country and in the world. Well, uh, I did not have the opportunity of studying at Notre Dame, <laughs> but both my son and my daughter are at Notre Dame, a junior and a freshman, and I can tell you from my many visits that what I just heard and perceived from you, it's all around campus, all faculty, students, when you talk to them, they have a clear vision and mission of where the university, how the university can support the greatest needs of today's world. And I am very proud to modestly be associated with, with Notre Dame, and I can only wish you the very best to the Keo School of Global Affairs, to Notre Dame, and to you personally, Dr. Appleby, for all the work that you are doing. And uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, as you build those partnerships, you're going to find many that are going to be making a line to say, I want to be part of such endeavor, and the benefit for the students that will be exposed to those global trends that you were describing will be of enormous help for them as individuals, but for the world as a whole. So thank you very much. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.